The crowd is roaring, cheers of applause everywhere, as the Matador pulls out his sword, prepared to fight the bull. The bull, seeing the sword, charges full speed ahead. The Matador prepares, and it stands, ready to strike. Right as the last second, when the bull is prepared to stick its horns into the Matador, the Matador dodges, sticks the sword in the bull right between the shoulder blades into the heart. The bull falls over, dead. Applause, roars of screaming, excitement throughout all the stadium can be heard as the Matador bows in honor. This is the art of bullfighting, which is what I'm going to describe to you today. Most people don't realize what bullfighting is all about. So let me introduce myself. I'm Nathan Teeter, and I'm going to talk to you about bullfighting and how my thesis is, while I think bullfighting has gone too far, I don't think it's necessary to completely ban it. The sources I used for credibility are including the MSSU website, Wikipedia, the Spanish Culture website, and The Guardian. The reason this is relevant is it has to do with the MSSU themed semester of Spain back in 2015. For my main points, I'm going to talk to you about the history of Spain with bullfighting the, and the stages of bullfighting, as well as the controversy going on. So, let's start with the history. The history, according to Wikipedia, can be related all the way back to 2100 BC in the Epic of Gilgamesh, and then eventually spread it all the way into Europe, including Rome, France, and then into Spain. It became super popular, a worldwide phenomenon, but it wasn't quite like bull riding today. Back then what they did was they rode on horseback and attacked the bull for game, until 1726. In 1726, Francisco Romero decided to fight the bull in a kind of dance form on foot. Later, Juan Belmonte did the same, but changed some things and made it to where it was more entertaining and more, even more of an art. Because of what Juan did, it led him to be the most famous bullfighter and most respected throughout all of history. So that you kind of get a little bit about the history, let me explain how it works. So, there are three stages in bullfighting, and a total of six men that work together in order to take down the bull. In the first stage, people come out with what's called muletas, or capes. What they do is they have the bull charge at them. While this is going on, the mantador watches. He looks for strengths and weaknesses of the bull, and prepares how he's going to act during the final stage. In the rest of stage one, there are two men come out with lances. They are also on horseback that are protected with armor. What these men do is they stick the lances into the bull in its neck. The reason for doing so is so that way it weakens the bull so it has to lower its head when it charges at the mantador later in stage three. They also try to encourage the bull to attack the horses as to wear them out. Now the horses aren't harmed since they're in full armor. Once the mantador thinks there's enough, it leads to stage two where three men come out with things called bandorillos. Bandorillos are basically things that are like sticks with a jagged, jagged end and that the other end is like a flag that is covered. They stick it in the shoulders of the bull in order to wear it down and wear it out. Once they've completed their task, the mantador steps in. He has 15 minutes to kill the bull. If he does it, he's full of honor and fame. But if he cannot kill the bull within 15 minutes, he is dishonored and the bull lives. They either then let the bull retire, or if they think it's too injured, they kill the bull. So, how does the mantador kill the bull? Well, it's kind of like I explained earlier. The mantador, what he does is let the bull charge at him while holding a muleta, or the cape, as I described earlier in stage one. He lets the bull charge over and over, and then at the right time, pulls out his sword, sticks it between the shoulder blades, into the heart of the bull, and the bull dies. If he is able to stick his sword into the bull, but doesn't do it correctly, or where it doesn't kill the bull quick enough, he is also dishonored. But if he's able to succeed, it's a huge deal. So now that you kind of understand how bullfighting works, let me explain the controversy going on. In the words of Dr. Alan Marion, a communications professor at MSSU, he describes it as bullfighting, the national festival stirs controversy. Supporters defend it as 
an extravagant export, a display of bravery, and a triumph over, over an art of brute force. Critics view it as cruel, bloodthirsty, and inherently, inherently unfair, since the Mantador is armed. And he's absolutely right. People think that it's super traditional on one end and think it should be totally allowed, while others are totally against it since it's so cruel and unfair. However, while these activists have gained big support with social media, they've had setbacks. Victor Barrio, who was a famous bull rider, passed away. But instead of showing support and love for his death, these activists lashed out on him and said it was great that he was dead. With this, Spain was super frustrated and took it out on the activist. However, the activists, according to The Guardian, are still gaining ground and are building up. So in conclusion, while explaining all these main points, I think the biggest thing to realize is that there has to be a compromise. I think that what they should do is take out certain things like the Bandorios and have a limit on how many bulls they kill each year. Now, while this may not be the perfect plan, I think a bullfighting should continue and be the best. So my question is, what do you think? Are you on one side or the other? Do you think there should be a compromise too? Should it all be banned? Should nothing happen? Personally, I don't know the answer, but I think with research and more time, I'm sure we'll make a good discovery and a great conclusion. Thank you for your time.